Hi guys, welcome to Trigger Discipline. My name is Brandon. Today we are going to be looking at a Remington Sportsman Model 48. It's a 20 gauge shotgun with a 22 inch barrel and if I'm reading my barrel marks correctly, it is uh, was manufactured in June of 1950. So here it is. So I picked this up from a buddy of mine who really has no really had no idea what he had really didn't care uh was just really wanting to get rid of it and i told him based on the condition that it's in because it's in pretty rough condition uh that i would give him 20 bucks for it mostly because i felt really bad just taking it from him uh but it is overall in pretty bad condition and we're just going to real quick Show clear. Now it does operate and function, but it does have a lot of love caps on it, and it's in pretty rough condition. So I figured, why not? I figured I'd take it off his hands, and we take a look at it and see what we could do to maybe restore it, bring it up to functioning level. And today we're pretty much just going to go through it, take it apart, and see what kind of trouble I'm in. So hang in there. Okay, so we're going to start, as they say, butt to tip. One thing I thought was kind of funny when I was looking at it initially, if you look right here, <laughs> it looks like there was like a dirt dauber nest attached to this uh, butt plate on the back here. And this is obviously not the stock butt plate for this butt stock, but you can kind of see where maybe it spent a little time in the dirt or maybe a dirt dauber nest was attached to it at one point. So moving down, the stock is not great. It's not terrible on this side. You can definitely see some love marks, scratches, mostly kind of just patina, really. I kind of like it when they're a little dinged up, especially these older guns. It, it's uh, proof of history to me. But on this side, you can kind of see it was some sticky, something here, definitely. I think this might be able to clean up. There's no real cracks or anything shown of really any damage other than just some wear so hopefully that'll clean up and we'll be able to we'll be able to hang on to the original buttstock so if we're moving down here you can see some pitting throughout i mean just kind of all over some minor surface rust um all the way down let's see if we can get that to focus yeah you can see some Definitely some scratches here. Here on the trigger ring, you can definitely see some love. It had definitely seen its fair share of abuse. And see down in here, there's definitely a lot of grime and nastiness in there. The gun itself, as far as the action is concerned, it's bone dry. Doesn't even feel like it's had oil on it in a really, really long time. So moving down, we have the feed ramp here. The feed ramps. Looks like it's got some pitting here. You can definitely see some rust starting to develop, but I think mostly that's just surface rust. So we should be able to clean this up and uh, make it look a lot nicer. Now the fore grip is in really rough shape. You can see all these cracks. These are full cracks that go all the way through, especially this one. This one is really bad. All the way down. And then right here, you can see the crack goes all the way down as well. This one looks like somebody tried to fix it at one point with some glue, uh, but that's uh, that's pretty much, that's in really rough shape. This side looks okay, but the bottom and the uh, right side is really messed up. So the barrel here, let's turn this up. On the barrel, it's not terrible. It's definitely had some love and some definitely some surface rust. But what's really concerning me about the barrel is the tip here. So right here at the front of the barrel, let's see if I can get this into focus. That is pretty significant. That is some pretty significant damage. So we'll have to get this barrel off and have it inspected and make sure that that can come we can clean that up 
and that that's not going to damage or um, fatigue the front of the barrel because we wouldn't want to shoot it and have it like, I don't know, explode or something. So we're definitely going to have to look at that. But overall, overall, it's still a gun and it's still functional. And hopefully we can restore it and bring it back to some kind of life. So let's start and let's break into it and see what we got going on inside here. Okay, well first things first, we're gonna show clear, make sure everything is good and there's nothing in there. It's good, we're gonna drop, show clear. Okay, first thing we gotta do is we're going to take these pins out and see if we can't get the trigger group to come out. So we're gonna bring it up like this, pop these out. Come on, little guy. There we go. Okay. All right. There's the trigger group. Yeah. That is disgusting. That is ugly. That's going to have to come apart and be completely cleaned out. All right. Well, there's that. Now we're going to take apart the magazine tube. We're just going to unscrew this. Okay. Put that aside. Gently. You don't want that, that spring in case it's under pressure. You don't want that to come flying out of there. Okay, this bushing and barrel should come right out, just like that. The spring, get that off of there. Oh, it's bone dry and it's not terrible looking, but definitely bone dry. Barrels definitely, yeah, yeah, that's seen a lot of wear. Looks great though. I love, like I said before, I love that kind of wear on some of these older guns. It really, really shows like just the history and how long it's been on this, how long it's been here. No, super cool. A little rust built up right here too. Let's get that into focus. Uh, come on, get the camera to focus on it. There we go. Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's a part. Well, let's see about getting this bolt out of there. Let's see if we can get it. Let's see. All right. That should come out. There we go. All right, and let's see. That should pull right out of there. All right, let's take a look at this. Yee. Bolt guide is nasty. Yeah, it's definitely in a really rough shape. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's see if we can get all oh, those. Right. We'll have to look into it, see how we can get all that apart. But that's definitely going to have to be stripped down and cleaned up and worked on a little bit. All right. On the inside here, let's see. Uh, definitely some definitely dry very dry very very sticky I don't know what's sticky in here I wonder if the oil just turned to mud with all the dirt and grime in there you see pretty gross okay so first let's go ahead and take a look at the bolt now we should we got to get this firing pin out to be able to drop the follower here and access inside the bolt. Now we should be able to push this pin out here down back the other side here right here get that into focus for you guys 
right there, which should allow the firing pin to come out the back and that should allow this to become two pieces. So now the firing pin is on spring under spring pressure. So I'm going to keep my thumb over it so it doesn't fly out at me. And we're going to come back and let that drop a little bit. And we're going to keep our thumb on that and drop that pin down like that. And that should, oh, it's stuck. Woo. Almost lost it there. All right, that should come out. There's the firing pin, which is nasty, just like everything else. And here's the spring. Surprisingly, that's not terrible. There's the bottom half, which looks nasty. We can probably, yep, we'll go ahead and do that real quick. Let's take that apart there and see what that looks like inside. Pin out, take that apart. It doesn't look awful. I mean, it's definitely, oh, there's a little grease still left in there. Oh, no, never mind. That's just more sticky. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so you can definitely see some grime and nasty stuff right in here. It's definitely been shown sign of run without being really well maintained and oiled. That looks pretty gross, but hopefully we can get that cleaned up. Uh, that doesn't look any worse. Let's try inside here. Yep. All that looks pretty gross and pretty gnarled up. Like I said, everything is all sticky. I don't know why it's sticky. <laughs> it's really bothering me that it's sticky. Hopefully we can get that cleaned up. That cleaned up here. All this. Let's see. Let's see if we can get the extractor out of there. I'm not really sure how to get that extractor out of there. It seems like there's no pin. Seems like maybe we can just push it in and press it out. Okay, I'm not going to lie. That took me a few minutes to figure out how to get that extractor out of there and a couple more tools. So we should be able to press that spring down and boop, it'll pop right out. Now that's under spring tension, so we don't want to fly that out. So there's the extractor right there. And let's see if we can get that pin and spring out of there. Come on, there we go. Out it comes, okay. Extractor pin, there should be a spring in there too. Oh, I'll see you. Come on, come on. There she is, extractor spring. All right, and then feeding arms here should pop right out really easily. There they go. And that's the bolt disassembled. We will probably throw all of that into the sonic cleaner and really get those cleaned up and then give them an oil bath to clean all that up. Okay. So next, we're gonna look at the trigger group here. I'm not really sure which way this is, or what order, rather, this is all supposed to come apart. So we're just gonna kind of go through it and get it taken apart as best we can. One thing I thought was pretty neat, if you look right here, it has a stop pin that's part of the pin itself to keep it from going out the other side here. I just thought that was kind of neat. You don't see that, well, or I've never seen it. It might be really common. I just hadn't seen it myself. So that's really cool. So we're going to start there. So let's see. Now all this is under has spring tension on it. So we're going to be really careful as we're pushing this stuff out, so that we don't have things fly across the room. Okay. There's that. That really didn't want to come out. There we 
I go. Okay. Brings the spring out. And looks like that's pretty much it. Trigger is pinned in right here, so we need to punch the pin out for the trigger assembly to come out, or trigger itself rather. It really doesn't want to come out. Let's see. can't hammer that pin out for the trigger. The other side. It does not want to come out. It's really stuck in there. Get a bigger hammer. Okay, how about we take the safety out first? See if that's binding it up. Safety pin. Let's see. Okay, well, I'm a dumbass and I let that safety spring fly out of there. So after about two to three hours of looking for it, she belongs to the sea now. So luckily that's just the safety. <laughs> yeah, but it should be easy to replace. So we'll have to get a replacement spring for the safety mechanism. Okay, so we're gonna move on. We're still binding here. We're still not wanting to get that spring out. So we're gonna move on to a different spot. We're gonna try to get this, this pin looks like it'll come out. We'll try to work our way back to a trigger pin. So we're going to push this out, mindful of all the springs this time. Okay. Let's see. Under, but this all ought to come out. There we go. Okay. All those pieces just came right out. There's some more. That one. There we go. Let's see. That pin ought to come out and release that. There we go. And this pin should allow these pieces to come out. Ah. There we go. We still have trigger assembly still attached. Boy, that feels rough. There we go. And we're going to pull, see if we can get this oh, pin out. That still doesn't want to come out. Let's see. Okay. Let's get our hammer block out here again. Push this pin out. See if we can get it to, got it to move. Let's see if we get it. 
Okay, we got to move a little bit there. Give it some real taps. There we go. go finally it's just really stuck in there trigger ought to come right out there we go oh gosh that's pretty rough I don't think I'm gonna take that all the way apart like that but we'll leave that there That looks nasty, nasty, nasty. It's not good. We'll throw this in the bath and the uh, sonic cleaning, sonic cleaner, and see if we can get all that cleaned up. Uh, we'll get this last little pin out of there. Oh no, no, we won't. We're just going to leave that one in there. Shouldn't hurt anything. Okay. Well, there is the trigger group. Or trigger pack whichever you want to call it and that'll go in the sonic cleaner and we'll see see how much we can get this cleaned up all right so the next step is we're going to try to get this buttstock off of here and there should be two screws here and here with allen wrenches or allen wrenches uh flathead screws so that we can be able to pull this stock off or the plate rubber rubber plate off I'm just gonna find it come on there it is okay I'm gonna unscrew that And because this is wood, you want to be gentle with this. We don't want to strip out the holes that the screws are attached to or screwed into the butt plate because it's wood. You'll not want to do it kind of evenly so that you're not stripping out or potentially stripping out the holes in the stock. still attached okay there should be down here down in here there should be a bolt holding it on or it's a big flat head okay okay let's see here I'm going to loosen this up so we should be able to just pop this pop this stock right off. It's coming up. There we go. And you can see it's coming right out just like that. Okay. There's the buttstock, got that off. I really want, because of how nasty this is, I really want to try to get this, this spring out. It looks like we're pinned in right here with this cap that's got some spring tension on it. So let's see if we can't get that out as well. Punch here. Let's try to go the other way because this already seems to want to go that way. Ah, there we go. That wasn't all the way in there anyways. We're going to hang on to that. Okay. So, let's see if we can push this out. There's a plunger for that spring in the tube. 
you're pulling that tube out here. So I'm holding this in because when I initially took that out, the plunger that was right here didn't release the spring pressure because of how nasty it is inside here. Let me get it. When I originally took this plunger out, the spring was still under tension because of how nasty it was. So the way this is supposed to work is once you take this plunger out and it's under serious spring pressure, see I can already start to take it out and you can already see it really doesn't want, like that spring's not attached to that right now. That's how nasty inside there is. And I can take it all the way out and there's no spring, that spring is stuck in there. So what we're gonna do is gently try to press this out. I'm gonna put my hand right here, thumb it. See if we can get the spring to push. There it goes. All right, and gently come out, and there it is. And we can get the spring out of there, and now we can actually clean inside this tube, which dramatically needs it, and this spring as well, get some, uh, Get some lubrication on that as well and clean that up. Okay, so for the last thing we're going to do is we're going to get this magazine tube spring and buffer out of here so that we can clean that out and clean the tube out as well. So right here there's a buffer holding that spring in place. Right, this little ring right here. So what we should be able to do is take our screwdriver here and just work it slowly out. Again, this is under spring tension, so we want to be gentle with it. And we also don't want to mar it up or mess it up, mess up anything. So we're going to be really careful and just kind of work it out. Turn it that way a little bit. Gently bring it out there. go keep pressure on it and then kind of work it out with your finger just like that just let it unspring itself there we go and then bring the whole thing out like that a spring cap and the buffer tube should be right in here well I don't think there's a way to get that buffer out of there without taking the tube off the receiver itself because if you look here there's little punches right there to keep it from going all the way down and it stops right here and you obviously can't get it out through the front of it but I think for our purposes here I think we'll be okay I think we can get all that cleaned out make sure we'll get some oil down in there after the sonic cleaning and we should be we should be okay but there we go that is the buffer tube or the buffer tube excuse me the uh <laughs> the feeding the magazine tube spring and end cap all right ladies and gentlemen here is your 1950s remington sportsman model 48 we have her all stripped down and in the next video we're going to show you putting these parts in the sonic cleaner and seeing if we can't get all the grime and nastiness all cleaned up off of it and see where we can go from there. If you like what you see so far, please like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video. I uh, hope to see you next time. Thank you very much.